community. To help AM950 grow, Snap Construction will be putting up proceeds to assist the station in marketing on social media. Snap Construction encourages you to follow, engage, share, and interact on the AM950 social media platforms. Together, we can all work to ensure AM950 continues to thrive and grow in our communities. We stand by our work with a lifetime craftsmanship guarantee. For a free estimate or more information on our financing, call 612-333-SNAP or check us out online. With a look at your AM 950 weather, I'm Patrick Lilia. Clearing skies tonight with a low of 58, then clouds move back in Tuesday with a high of 80. If you've been waiting to replace those appliances, don't miss Warner Stallion's lowest prices of the season. Score instant savings, then up to 10% off, and a bonus for each additional appliance you buy. Put us to the test at warnerstallion.com. Portions of the following program may be pre-recorded. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host, guest, random reptoid, or chupacabra may not necessarily reflect those of AM950 Radio, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Now, it's time to step into the unknown. There are things people experience but never talk about. A shadow moving in the corner, flickering of the lights, a disembodied voice. We invite you to talk with us, share your story, share your experience, because this isn't just your story. This is our story. This is Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. And this is Ghost Box Radio on AM 950, where every night we talk about the paranormal... program here in am 950 i've been doing paranormal radio now for about uh on am 950 weekly for about three years and it's been a lot of fun but uh i am really really excited that i'm going to be able to give everybody in the twin cities and beyond their nightly paranormal fix and that's what we're here to do so we're gonna be talking about all sorts of different things you know we're talking about spirits and ghosts and metaphysical things as well as cryptids ufology we're going to talk true crime really everything let's put it this way nothing's off the table we can talk about just about anything and i am very excited to be able to do this and i'm very excited that you're joining me uh now there's probably gonna be some new listeners tonight and i just want to thank you for giving me a chance i hope that uh, we provide something that you find very interesting this is also a very interactive forum so please Feel free to take part in any way that you can. Uh, and, you know, just a little bit about myself. I've been a paranormal investigator for about 15 years, and I've been doing a radio show on the paranormal, you know, at some kind of iteration, probably for about eight years, whether it be internet radio or being like uh, on AM 950. So there is a lot of excitement uh, for us to do this, and we're really happy to be able to bring this. And And I hope that you find something good about it. Now, a lot of people always attribute Art Bell and Coast to Coast as their first radio show when they talk about first hearing the paranormal on radio. But for me, I want to give credit to our hometown boys at Darkness Radio with Dave Schrader and Tim Dennis. They have been my inspiration for many years to do a show like this. So while I'm starting off over here, I just want to say they're good people. They're great inspiration. If I can do a tenth as well as they can do, I think I'm going to be doing pretty well. So I just want to do a shout out to Dave and Tim on that. Now, as doing this nightly radio show, it has been a dream of mine for some time. So I just thought it was appropriate that tonight we talk about dreams. Now, I understand that the dreams we're going to be talking about, which is interpretation, is going to be different than the dreams of aspiration. But nevertheless, I think it's going to be uh, it's just going to be a wonderful program to talk about tonight. So Moon Girl, Mistress of Paranormal, is a psychic medium who has discovered her abilities and has been connecting with spirit since a very young age. Moon Girl is a paranormal investigator and an obscure divination reader since the age of 12. She offers divination readings from the basic readings to the more obscure Chinese face readings and so much more. Moon Girl is also an actress and we'll be working on some upcoming projects really soon. She's a podcaster, and she's a co-host of the Paranormal Dolls, which is aired on Roku TV, Apple TV, so many other places. There's so much to her bio that 
we're going to post the whole thing so you can see everything that she's doing because she is doing a lot. Moon Girl, welcome to Ghost Box Radio. Yeah, congratulations on this show. I'm super, super happy for you. Well, and it hasn't self-destructed yet, so I think we're in good shape. I mean, you know, it's a good start, right? Uh, so, you know, while we're doing this, uh, you know, feel free. We're not taking calls at the moment, but feel free. If you're watching on Facebook, on the AM 950 Facebook page, uh, Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bach and Facebook page. It's on my LinkedIn, it's on uh, AM 950 YouTube and Twitter. Uh, feel free to leave a comment for us. Uh, you know, if you want to leave also a dream that you'd like to have some sort of interpretation of, uh, Moon Girl would give it a shot. I mean, and we're going to talk about, and she so rightly told me before we started the program, that there are a lot of variables uh, to doing this. So, you know, we'll just play it all by ear, but I just want to say how excited I am to have you on with me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited and I get to be your first nightly show or weekly show now guest. So thank well, you. Yeah. And the thing is, I'm like, honored. I, like I said, before we started, uh, there is a lot of pressure. If, if you mess up, <laughs> You yourself mess up. This program is doomed. Okay, so let's. Just, uh, no pressure. Well, I mean, it's a lot of pressure. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Okay, good. I mean, I'm serious, right? I mean, this is this is this could kill my career, Moon Girl. So, I'm about to like hang. <laughs> so, so here's the thing: dreams. How they're just incredible, aren't they? I mean, the I. I look forward every night when I go to sleep and I know this sounds strange, but I, I always look forward going to sleep because you kind of, it almost seems like the dreams type of dreams kind of go in sort of waves, I guess. Like they're, they're, they're very uh, almost like categorically, like you might get a random nightmare once in a while, but if you get like a good run of dreams, they seem to kind of all work together. And I, I guess the thing I always love about dreams is that, you never know where you're going to go in them. And I find that so fascinating. Oh, absolutely. Um, but dreams can be very, very helpful. They can let you know a lot of things about what's going on in your life that maybe you don't really want to, um, I guess, come to terms or realize or anything with. Um, so they can be very, very helpful to you. Now, I don't know if this is, and and if, if I'm starting to veer off of, kind of what we were talking, what we said we're going to talk about, just let me know. Do you know if it is true that they say like the human brain will generally only put faces and dreams of people that you know? So if it's not someone that's familiar to you, that that could possibly be like either a spirit or something else? Well, it also kind of you you have to also take into consideration that sometimes they're blurry so maybe that's why you don't know if they're familiar or not do you understand what i'm saying sure. but it's the person and then if you do dream someone who's or a face that's blurry that again that means something uncertainty uh, or something obscure mm -hmm. so it all depends again you have to kind of go into the the dream and i also find it very interesting too that for me at least, one thing that always surprises me is like some of the places, the architecture of some of the places that I've been in my dreams. Like how could I think of the inside of a, a just an example, like a castle or just something very modern looking? Like I in my I where did that come from? I don't even understand where in my brain that would have been to create a dream like that. You know, just absolutely beautiful landscapes. I mean, I find that really uh, just, I find that pretty cool, actually. It is. And dreams that have like geographical dreams, like if you're dreaming a place that you maybe never been at or a beautiful place, it could even be a really ugly place. That is um, where you are psychologically at the time or in the moment. So say you dream a really beautiful place, maybe you're really doing well, you're in a good place right now. If you dream a place that maybe is not, you know, it, it's kind of scary looking or whatever, you know, you may not be in the best mindset psychologically. Maybe you're going through a depression, maybe something like that. So that's interesting. Think back, <laughs> think that's... back of the times when you dream good things, like in, in good locations. Were you in a good place? Were you happy? Were you excited about something? Yeah. And then 
dream about think about the places the times you dreamt that you were in places that maybe were a little bit you know kind of sketchy and you might have been not in the best place at that time in your life i'll tell you something that uh when uh when i decided like i was wanting when i really got into the paranormal all those years ago i remember having like dreams about being an investigator every single night for about three months just every single night I was somewhere else doing an investigation. It was never scary. It was just me doing the thing I do now. And I find that very interesting because the, to me, I mean, I, I suppose that's part of it too, Moon Girl, is that you start to kind of like, you can come to your own conclusions with the dream by, if, if by a message being told you so many times. I mean, that to me was like, I think I need to do this then if I'm dreaming about it so much. Oh, there's so many different types of dreams. There's those type of dreams where you feel like you're being pushed to something. There's like lucid dreams. There's, uh, you know, the common dreams, like the nightmares, um, daydreams. Um, so it all depends, uh, the visitations as well. So, um, but with that one, yeah, it did really seem like that was where you were being guided to go. Absolutely. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Why don't we do this? It was already time to take our first break. When we come back, we have some people who have some dreams that they'd like to share. I have some more questions, and I think we're going to have a great uh, program. We have Moon Girl with us. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Connections Radio Show is all about tapping into our hardwired hunger to connect. We examine meaningful connections to ourselves, our community, and the world around us by opening the door to innovative insights by a wide variety of interesting guests we'll make the connections to something bigger than ourselves join me lori fitz your host of connections radio show and together we'll make the connections saturday mornings at 9 a.m on am 950 the progressive voice of minnesota hey it's tom going solar is a great way to save on energy costs by using the sun to power your house, you can feel good about an investment that will last for years. All Energy Solar is a locally trusted turnkey solar installer that's been around since 2009. They provide custom designs and quality installations of solar panel systems that work for your energy needs. One of the best parts about going solar is it's an investment that can pay for itself. Your system can pay back 100% of the installation cost in as little as eight years. Plus, a system from All Energy Solar can pay back over 300% of its cost over its lifetime. There's also many tax incentives and rebates available, and the experts at All Energy Solar can walk you through the entire process to make sure you're saving as much as possible. So go green, both financially and environmentally, with All Energy Solar. Get a free, no-obligation assessment from All Energy Solar by calling 800-620-3370 or visiting allenergysolar.com. If you own a holistic or metaphysical business and are looking to expand, then you need to be listed on metamorphosisconnections.com. It's a network where you can grow with like-minded practitioners and reach new clients. Metamorphosisconnections.com is an online directory you need to list yourself and your business. Our platform makes it easy for you to create listings of your products and services, and you can also choose to list your classes, events, and so much more. MetamorphosisConnections.com helps you create weekly and monthly promotional ads targeted towards your potential clients and promotes them for you via social media and newsletter. There are clients searching for your specialty right now. Let us help them find you. Start your listing today so you can share your own unique gifts and talents by finding the level of membership that best fits your needs. Let us help you reach your clients that are searching for what you do. Visit metamorphosisconnections.com and sign up today. Hi, this is Laura. Listen to Food Freedom Radio every Saturday at 8 a.m. or anytime via podcast. Our individual health is connected, connected to the health of each other and connected to the health of the earth. We know the problems with the dominant food system, climate change, deadening soils, nitrates in the water, factory farming, injustice, concentration of wealth. How do we both as individuals and as a community step up and support a living food system which honors the earth? Tune to Food Freedom Radio every Saturday at 8 a.m. And remember to support your independent farmers. And welcome back to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. My name is Greg Bach, and thank you for joining us tonight. Now, uh, what we're going to do every week is we're going to have a question of the week. Uh, I want to know what uh, my listeners think about certain subjects. And the question this week is, if you could only meet one 
Would you rather meet a spirit of a loved one, an alien, or a Bigfoot? And uh, you just you can send me your answer if you so desire at uh, comment at ghostboxradio.com. That's comment at ghostboxradio.com. You can also put in the comments if you are currently uh, watching in the chat on Facebook on the different pages that we're on. And I will culminate that. And we're going to do something on Fridays called Casual Fridays. We'll read the answers that we get. So feel free to be as creative as you want or as truthful as you want. And boy, do I have a letter that I'm going to read on Friday that I can't wait to do. I'm, I'm just going to be honest about that. We are talking with Moon Girl. We're talking about dream interpretations. And I'm going to be honest, uh, Moon Girl, this is a very short break. So I might have to cut it or segment might have to cut you off a little bit, but uh, we'll get right back at it. Um, one thing I was curious about is the fact that there is um, loved ones who pass mm -hmm. that come through. And may I, may I read something that a, a listener sent through? Yes, please. Uh, so let's see here. And I had one too, and I may not get to it because I much rather hear what, what uh, listeners have to say. Uh, Lauren said, I had a dream that my mother came to me and said her doctor told her she had a problem with her legs and she had to do certain exercises. I told her I had leg weights that might help her. She told me that they would be too heavy for her. I told her that they're the type she could take sections of the weight out so the ankle weight are not too heavy. Now, what I don't know if it's completely clear, clear here, but I, I have a feeling that, Lauren, your your mother had passed. Is I, I'm understanding, or am I misinterpreting that? Because that's what I was going to ask. I'm like, did her mom, mom pass, or because let me ask you this, and and if if you're okay with me uh, taking up more time with uh, trying to trying to explain some a dream that has kind of been with me for a while. And that is that uh, in 2015, my dad had passed uh, suddenly and I had a lot of dreams that I would I would be in a room and he'd be at the far end of the room. And when I'd catch up with him, he'd go through a doorway. And when I catch up with him, he wasn't in that room. I understand that that is a like a, a mind game that your mind is playing on yourself. You can't get to him. I understand that part. But then about a year later, I had a dream that uh I was back in my childhood kitchen at my childhood home and my dad was sitting at the table. He always sits at in the kitchen and my mom, she's over to the side. She's making what we'd call canoopers drinks for dad. Dad looked like he was 50, not nearly 80 when he died. He looked like he was in his fifties. He looked really good. And, uh, I, I, I looked at him and, I, and suddenly it be, the dream became lucid. And I said to him, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be here. You, you've died and he disappears. And I said, Oh no, you don't. You come back here right now. And he came back. And I just said to him, you know, I am very angry that you died. You know, I love you very much, but I'm very angry that you died. And the look on his face, I mean, once again, whether I, I believe it's him that came to me, but if it was a dream, where does that look come from? It was truly someone who was touched that, you know, I, in my in my child and throughout my life, I don't think I ever really said, even though we did it in actions, I never truly said, you know, dad, I love you. You know, so it's it's a, it was a very, very powerful dream that I must have had in like 2016 and has sat with me to this day. So those were two different dreams of him, correct? That is correct. Yes. OK, so. Here's here's the thing. Some people want to debate whether um, when someone when you dream a past loved one, whether it was a dream or it was actually a visitation. There is visitations. I've had so many yeah. visitations uh, before and even right before they were about to pass the in between stage. So that is true. But however, that being said, they're not always visitations. So you you have to look at what a what a dream really means. Yep. Those are thoughts. Those are your inner thoughts, the inner, like, you know, the Jiminy Cricket that you're, you know, your conscience be your guide. So you're talking to yourself all day long, your inner dialogue. When you go to REM sleep, because there's five faces of trying to sleep or falling asleep. The first one would be, you know, you're barely kind of dozing off, whatever. Second, brainwave starts kind of slowing down. Your third slows down more. Mm -hmm. Your fourth would be more 
the deep sleep. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, then the fifth would be REM, which is when you finally fall asleep. So that being said, instead of uh, you having your inner dialogue where you're speaking to yourself or you're hearing that voice, you start dreaming things, metaphors, symbolisms, colors, and also emotions and feelings. So when you dream a past, so when you dream somebody in your dream, whether they're alive or not, mm -hmm. that's your inner dialogue, but in another person's body. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. So for some people, I believe the first one was a dream. I believe the second one was a visitation, especially because it was a lucid dream and you did the right thing, but I'll get into that. So um, when, so the, so if you dream your father who had passed, right, and yep. he was telling you something or whatever, that could be a part of a part of you that a part of him that you carry with you. In other words, like, you know, how they say, OK, you're just like your father or whatever, or you like coffee like your father. Um, but that's usually your inner dialogue with yourself in another person's body. Uh, now, when it comes to. So, OK, I can kind of like do it this way, um, say like your your grand, you're very sick and um, you dream that your your grandma tells you, hey, you need to take this, um, maybe this old wife's tail remedy, you know, and you might wake up and think, oh, my God, my grandma came to me. She says I should drink this. No, it's that actually wasn't your grandmother. That was actual dream your subconscious going back and forth in your head thinking, Oh, maybe I should take that thing. My grandma used to give me and it comes in the form of grandma because she would nurture you. It's comforting, but it actually was a dream. It was, it was you talking to yourself through your grandma and grandma knows best because she would be the nurturer. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like, it comes in the guise of what you would trust and respect. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, when it comes to visitations, yes, there is visitations and they'll come and give you, you know, there'll be symbolisms and stuff in there. So there's absolutely visitations. And the fact that it was a lucid dream mm -hmm. and then you did the right thing to confront him because you're supposed to confront things in your lucid dreams, contrary to what other people say, like, oh, my God, I've seen so many um, TikTok videos where. Um, they're not giving the proper information. They're like, oh, if you ever have a lucid dream, don't confront this or that, or don't ask these people around you, who are they? Because something horrible can happen. It's the other way around. Um, that's the perfect timing to ask if it is a person or whatever it is, and they will answer you. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to answer you as an, oh, um, um, as a thing. They could be like, okay, you're going through a rough patch financially or whatever. You ask them, hey, what are you? Even though it's a person you're dreaming, like, hey, I'm the loan that you need to pay you're worried about. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. No, that's very interesting. And, uh, you know, it just, and, you know, the thing is, it's, it's, it was one of those things that didn't even really think about it. It just was like, I know what you are. I know who you are. You're not supposed to be here. And I always thought that the first, the first set of dreams, and there were a lot of them. They were coping mechanisms. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure of that. And then that last one was just like, really, I mean, it's, it's stuck with me all these years. And I, it's one of my favorite memories just in general of life mm -hmm. you know? because it was, you know, it was nice to be able to, that was my way of saying goodbye. He, he, he passed so suddenly. Mm -hmm. that there was no goodbye. Yeah. Uh, why don't we do this? Because uh, I want to get into a bunch of other stuff here. Like I said, that was definitely a visitation. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take another break. When we come back, uh, we're going to continue our conversation with Moon Girl. I have some more dreams that we're going to put our way, mm -hmm. and we'll just keep the conversation going. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Local Minnesota is a great way to find locally owned Minnesota restaurants and food purveyors. You'll find high quality food and unique eating experiences with dishes from around the world. Just visit eatlocalminnesota.com for your next meal. 
Bruner Supper Club invites you to Maggie's Lounge, an exciting new bar lounge. It's open Wednesdays through Sundays beginning at 4.30 for cocktails and light fare. And you don't need a ticket to enjoy the great atmosphere of Maggie's. So stop by Crooner's Supper Club off Moore Lake and Highway 65 for dinner, drinks, and live music from both big name local and national artists. Cafe Latte combines a cafe dining experience with gourmet quality food. Plus, you can still do online ordering and takeout along with gift cards. Just go to CafeLatte.com and choose from their ever-changing selection of award-winning salads, sandwiches, and soups. Cafe Latte is located off Victoria and Grand and online at CafeLatte.com. Hey, it's Patrick for Zero Res. Allow me to give you a couple of the most important cleaning tips that you need to know. Vacuuming is not sufficient to maintain the cleanliness and lifespan of your carpet, period. My friends at Zero Res use their platinum-rated cleaning system that safely and effectively removes all that deeply embedded nasty dirt, dander, and bacteria. Not only does the patented Zero Res process clean better than anything on the market, surfaces dry faster and your home and business will stay cleaner longer guaranteed. July is National Carpet Cleaning Month, and because of that, check out this amazing deal Zero Res has going. Zero Res is offering three rooms starting at just 129 bucks, and get a fourth room free. It's also the perfect time of year to get your air ducts clean this month and take 20% off any air duct cleaning. Call 952-ZERO-RES or go to ZeroResMinnesota.com and ask for the AM950 special. That's Zero Res. July is the annual storewide sale at Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces. Come see our diverse selection of wood, gas, or electric fireplace products for indoor and outdoor living. And right now, Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces can assure you the best price of the season on every product in the store. Let Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces help you choose and experience the joy of sitting by a fire. Summer is a great time to install your fireplace. You can find your perfect fireplace and have it installed and ready before the cold weather hits again. If you already have a wood fireplace, consider a fireplace insert. Come and see the entire selection at Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces on East Franklin and Riverside in Minneapolis. They will create a fireplace that works for you. Efficient, clean burning, and environmentally smart. Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces, since 1977, out of the ordinary products and services to make fire work for you. With a look at your AM 950 weather, I'm Patrick Lilia. Clearing skies tonight with a low of 58, then clouds move back in Tuesday with a high of 80. 30 bales is a celebration of the best of everything Midwestern cuisine has to offer. Located on the corner of Main Street and 11th Avenue in Hopkins with plenty of free parking. More at 30bales.com. Now, would you like to have a chance to listen to some amazing evidence from a paranormal investigation that we've done over at a very haunted location that is also a historic landmark? Then uh, this Friday, July 14th, come out to Rush City, go to the Grand House. We are doing a special presentation. And we call it 18 minutes. It'll take longer than 18 minutes to do. Don't worry. Um, where it's probably, for me, one of the most complete investigations that we have done that had different types of evidence. You know, talking about EVPs, spirit box, disembodied voices, knocks on the wall, and uh, someone channeling, and get, uh, someone asking questions two floors down and getting an answer uh, on the third floor, and all of it is recorded. Literally all of it is recorded. It is so fluid, it is so amazing, and it also includes records that someone on our team found that correlates with everything that we've done. It, it is one of the most beautiful things that I've ever been a part of. We're gonna share that with everybody. So this Friday, July 14th at 6.30 p.m. at the Grand House, we're doing this presentation and it's going to be fantastic. But if you're hungry, we're going to have a buffet dinner starting at 5.30. That's an extra extra cost. Come on in. The presentation's 10 bucks to get in. The, the buffet uh, dinner, which is going to be amazing, is a different price altogether. But you're going to have a great time. You're going to be able to see one of the most beautiful buildings in Minnesota, the Grand House, in one of the great 
cities outside the Twin Cities, Rush City, which isn't too terribly far from from the downtown Minneapolis and around the surrounding area. So please come out, see us. It's going to be a lot of fun and uh, hope to see you there. That's this Friday. You're going to hear me talk about it all week. Now we're back with Moon Girl and uh, we're having I'm, we're having a great conversation about dreams. And honestly, Moon Girl, this has been very fascinating. Thank you so much for everything that uh, you've you've been sharing with us. No, you're very welcome. Yeah. Uh, so I have, if I may, uh, I have another one I'd like to throw your way and get your thoughts on, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, so Brad Webb from Crack Skull Paranormal, he had said he was really sick a couple months ago. He had a dream. He was floating outside above his own body telling himself. So the dream, him, him floating, sounds like telling himself not to move so he would heal and get better. Okay. Um, floating dreams, um, even though they may seem scary, um, they're usually um, an indication of you're being pushed towards something. So maybe he was really scared, intrusive thoughts oh. that he kept going to thinking, oh, my God, I'm really sick. What if something really bad happens to me? What if I don't get over the sickness? Um, what if I have to go to the hospital? What if I die or whatever? So it's like kind of your your mind keeps pushing you to those thoughts. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. And, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for Brad, but I would think that, you know, depending on how sick you uh, are, absolutely. yeah, that would be perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's really interesting. And, and, you know, it's, it, you know, the one thing that I feel like that we're, we're getting out of this conversation is that your, your mind is really trying to take care of you or at least try in some cases trying to take care of you in your sleeping state. Like it's trying to tell you stuff that you may not be listening to when you're awake. Yeah. Or you just don't really want to listen to, you just don't want to confront it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm, I'm the king <laughs> of that. I really am. <laughs> uh, Lauren uh, just, uh, she wrote back. I, and I did see that earlier, Lauren, that she said that uh, her, her mom did pass. She was the one that uh, had her, her mom in the dream. Her mom did pass. And, um, she, you know, just like me talking about my dad, she also wrote in the comments that she she thought that the uh, uh, that the dreams felt very real, like it was really her mom. OK, I feel bad saying this and I'm sorry, but I don't I don't I don't think that was a visitation, hon. I'm so sorry. Uh, because it's it's interesting and I'm going to go back to the dream and and and, uh, you know, and obviously, Lauren, you you can you can take whatever you want out of out of the dream right i mean if but yeah. i mean it the thing that kind of i was interested in was she had passed but she was talking about her mom was talking about herself you know yeah. and that's where i was kind of interested and I, I was going the same direction as you were because it it is like it's almost like almost like a, in, in a sense like you know the, when you do a paranormal investigation the residual energy like that's a maybe not a residual dream to speak but maybe it's something that she would have done in a conversation they would have had when she was alive well it's it's her talking to herself saying kind of like maybe if i would have been more on top of it or maybe if i helped more maybe you know it was her inner dialogue versus that being a visitation from her mom mm -hmm. do you understand yeah I, and i know it's you don't want to hear that but there is differences. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that's what it was. Because I told Greg, too, those other ones that he mentioned were not visitations. Those were dreams. But the last one was a visitation. And then there is a difference. And the fact that she was talking about herself. And again, that's you. Actually, her talking to you. So maybe there's a sense of feeling a little bit of guilt or uh, missing her. Um, and then you're talking about there's something wrong with her leg. So to me, that indicates that it could be that versus a visitation. I have another one. It's, it's a bit long. <laughs> uh, if, if, if you're, if you're open for it, or I could save it for the last segment. Cause we have about uh, seven minutes before we go take our break. Let me, let me, let me read it. And if we don't get to your thoughts on it, we can, we can come back and uh, we can, we can discuss it a little bit more. This is sent to me anonymously. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a dream that I went to my old home where my ex still lives. We broke up a year ago. 
In the dream, his new girlfriend gave me a box of things that my ex had held on to and said were mine, but the items weren't mine. They were things he had bought her or bought at, bought after we broke up. One of the items was a baseball that had my name on it as if someone had signed it. I was confused and asked the new girlfriend about it. She said, we went to the baseball game and I paid for the ball and for him to get an autograph. So she went to the game, paid for the ball for him to get an autograph and he had them sign your name to it. That's what the girlfriend said. The, the new girlfriend said in the dream. There was also a teddy bear in the box that she insisted was mine, but I've never seen. I took the ball in my hand, walked to my ex who was in the living room and asked him about it. He first looked confused and was acting like he didn't know what I was talking about. Then he started acting upset and wouldn't give me a clear explanation. I later learned that night, I later learned that the night I had the dream was the day he became engaged to his now girlfriend. So that part is, but that part is not a dream he, that they actually got engaged. I just don't understand the meaning of the dream, especially with the signed baseball. And I could reread any of it because I'm sure I, I massacred it when I read it. There, there's a, there's a couple of things in there, but if you want to kind of get to the nitty gritty in a short answer, um, you said you dream it was your home. Was it her home? It, it, it was a home. Uh, let's take a look here. I had a dream. I went, to, no, she went to her old home where her, her, old her home. ex still lives. Her ex still lives there. Okay. A home um, represents your state of mind. Okay. And the fact that you went back there, you know what I'm trying to say? Um, that's your psyche going back and replaying the connection you had with him, which wasn't good. And um, so that's just you kind of going back to, to that in a nutshell. And then the fact that he got engaged, that's kind of also your, maybe you kind of already thought maybe he's dating or maybe he'll get with somebody or whatever. Maybe he's dating, but it's like, maybe you hadn't fully, you could say you're good. But deep down, sometimes you're not exactly completely healed from it. Yeah. And maybe you are over it, but you still kind of think about it. So you go back to that because your home is always your state of mind. Yeah. So I hope that helped. That, that I mean, I, I can't speak for this person who sent it, but I mean, that seems to make <laughs> a lot of sense uh, to me. Uh, what, what do you think about the signed baseball with her name on it? Do you have any thoughts on that? I think it's. I think it's her telling herself, I need a break away from this. It's a bat. Her name's on it. And she's talking to herself. Um, I'm also getting a bit of anger, to be honest. But like I said, a home is usually your state of mind. And the fact that it was so many different things in that dream, like it was just kind of crazy, like in a sense where there's this and that, that's kind of like maybe her not... Um, I don't want to say fully come to terms, but I feel like she has, but it's just it still kind of hurts her um, and maybe going back and forth with that. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I feel about that. It's, that's very interesting. Now, uh, I don't we I don't know how much we talked about in your bio. I mean, you're you, the, the work you do as as a medium. You're very powerful. You're very gifted. Thank you. Uh, you say stuff like when you're talking about this dream, you say stuff. I feel anger. Are you using medium when you say that, or are you just going off of what you think the dream is? I'm just curious. That one I felt my mediumship. But here's the thing. When you are a psychic medium, you can use it for whatever, right? right. But if you just want to go by the dreaming, that's one thing. But it does help a lot, even with any type of divination, you know. Say you just do tarot. Um, anyone can learn how to do tarot, read tarot cards. But if you're a medium, you're psychic, not only what you're, what the card means, but what you're feeling, what you're seeing, any type of senses that you're getting. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's very, that's very interesting. And I and mean, if, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, if you want to go back to like the visitations, you know, a lot of people think, okay, well, if, if you're a psychic medium, you'll have visitations. You don't have to be a psychic medium. You don't have to be a medium. You don't even have to have, you know, be gifted in any way. You will still can get visitations. Now, sometimes if you are a psychic medium, you will get uh, visitations from other people mm -hmm. to give, you know, um, a message to somebody else. And I've had a lot of that happen to me. I had this um, one that really stuck out to me was this girl. 
I knew on Facebook many years ago, an old Facebook I had, um, we were just acquaintances. I never really spoke to her, but I knew she was very close to her sister. She would post pictures of her sister all the time, but I never spoke to her sister. Anyways, unfortunately, her sister passed away giving birth. Oh, wow. um, and that was really sad. And um, I, she was posting about it and I felt bad for her. Um, I went to sleep and I had this dream and it was a visitation. You see, and it sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between a visitation and, you know, a dream. But I knew this was a bit of both. So I dream. I didn't see myself, but I could see them. I couldn't see myself. I could see them, though. They were in a bed. So the comforter was floral. The younger one was who passed away was straightening her hair. They were eating like hot Cheetos, snacks, laughing. Mm -hmm. She was doing something silly to her hair. And... There was another part of the dream we'll get to right now. And I felt like I needed to tell her, but you know, this was still a fresh death and I don't want to, you know, cross any boundaries. That's yeah. a very sensitive subject. So I didn't want to say anything. And I knew that that was a visitation. It was not a dream. Um, and I wasn't going to say anything, but I kept feeling her tell me to tell her. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm just going to tell her. So I wrote to her, you know, we're not like, I don't have a phone number or anything. We don't, like I said, we're not close or anything like that. And um, I described everything. Like I said, even the uh, comforter, floral comforter, it took her like a bit and she responded to me. And she told me that she had just watched a show about mediums and she was praying and asking, you know, God, her sister, please speak to somebody, get me a medium. I wish a new medium could talk to one of them. And I had that dream the same night wow. um and here's the kicker that i didn't tell her this other part of the dream because i thought even i thought i was like this is kind of weird like i said i knew they were very close because they were always together but i didn't know much you know um the other part of the dream this is when it changes they're in a vehicle um the older one's driving the younger one that passes them in the passenger seat then they parked i see her jump in the back seat and again, I can't hear them in this part of the dream. They're not, I could only see, like things are coming out of their mouth that I can't hear. Um, the older one gets out of the car, opens the back seat and is trying to pull her out. And the one who passes like kicking her. And I'm like, why would you, I don't think they fight. They seem really close. This is kind of like a crazy dream. I shouldn't, you know, maybe I shouldn't say it. Maybe I'm wrong, but she was wearing shoes and she was kicking her. I kept seeing the shorts and something about her legs. I kept getting like, you know, visual, the legs, the legs was important. So I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say this. And I was like, no, I'm good. I already told her this part. That's enough. She said everything was right. She told me, yes, that, you know, that was her comforter. And her sister would straighten her hair all the time on the bed. And they were actually one of the last times they were like eating hot Cheetos on the bed and stuff. Sure. So I was like, that's, uh, she goes, yeah, it was actually kind of right before the girl had passed so one of the last things they did so i was good with that giving her the message and i was like i'm just gonna leave it at that and i felt the young lady kept saying no you have to say this you have to say this and i just felt so weird saying it and i said you know what you know i vomit i'm gonna do it and i wrote to her and i told her look i didn't tell you about this part so i'm gonna just tell you about it it's showed that she saw it and it took her a long time to respond and i was like oh my god what did you do mm -hmm. like <laughs> this is really weird and she told me she's like oh my god this is crazy me and her were driving somewhere and i wanted her to get off at the store with me but she didn't want to get off because she was wearing shorts and she hadn't shaved her legs oh so she jumped to the back seat so I opened the back seat and I was pulling her by the hands and she starts trying to kick me off. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, so you see, that didn't make sense to me because, you know, but to them, it made sense. So that's more of a mediumship kind of visitation dream versus an actual dream. That is incredible. Well, we got to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to finish everything up with uh, Moon Girl. This is absolutely incredible. I really appreciate this conversation. We have plenty more to come. We're going to be right back after this. Hi, 
Hi, this is Chad from AM950. Snap Construction is arguably the most well-reviewed roofing, siding, window, and insulation contractor in the metro. Ryan is so excited about working with AM950 and our listeners that he wants to help us grow. This is Ryan, owner of Snap Construction. I was friends with Chad long before I started marketing with him. I was a bit skeptical of radio advertising before Chad convinced us to run ads. The advertising's been so successful, we want to help the station grow. We've absolutely loved working with the listeners of AM950, and we all know how extremely important this radio station is to the community. To help AM950 grow, Snap Construction will be putting up proceeds to assist the station in marketing on social media. Snap Construction encourages you to follow, engage, share, and interact on the AM950 social media platforms. Together, we can all work to ensure AM950 continues to thrive and grow in our communities. We stand by our work with a lifetime craftsmanship guarantee. For a free estimate or more information on our financing, call 612-333-SNAP or check us out online. Hi, this is Paul Metz. Thanks for listening to the Wall of Power Radio Hour for the last five years on AM 950. We air every Saturday night at 6 p.m. We have artists, musicians, private detectives, politicians, and more. On AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. Would you let animals pick your insurance? Do you really need to experience mayhem to get the best rates? Or how about a celebrity quarterback or fake university saving you money? There's a lot of marketing stunts when it comes to insurance, but what you really need is someone looking out for you. Call Array Insurance, and they will work hard to find you the best insurance coverage and rates. So avoid gimmicks and call Cheryl at Array, 763-504-3067 or ArrayInsurance.com. Array Insurance, working hard for you. I'm Candy Brothel. I'm Elizabeth Sullivan. And I'm Kelly Wagner. Energize yourself with AM 950's Sunday Shine Radio from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Sunday Shine Radio radiates wellness, consciousness, and curiosity. Join me, Candy Brothel, for green tea conversations at 10 a.m. Exploring sovereignty with Elizabeth at 11 a.m. And the Being Curious show at noon. Our lineup focuses on igniting your own self-discovery and personal wellness. Tune in every Sunday for Sunday Shine Radio from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And let us guide you on an inspirational journey each week. Turn to Auto Technical with your vehicle donation. Even though Auto Technical is a small nonprofit, we have helped more families with transportation than any organization in Minnesota. Since 94, we have reconditioned donated vehicles so they have a higher tax benefit. Call Richard at 612 919 5526. 612 919 5526 or autotech.org. And tomorrow night, we're going to have on author Michael J. Warden to talk about his new book, Lynched by a Mob, the 1892 Lynching of Robert Lewis in Port Jervis, New York. It'll be a very interesting conversation. Also coming up this week, we're going to be talking about the Haunted Bell Mansion in Ohio on Wednesday, Demonology with Father Kenneth Torres on Thursday, and then, of course, Casual Friday, where we catch up on paranormal headlines, read uh, listener feedback, and just ease our way into the weekend. I hope you join us all week. And boy, I got something I can't wait to read on Friday. I'm just going to be honest with that. Uh, we are currently, uh, though, talking with Moon Girl, and we've had such a, com- a great conversation. I hope you're having a good time tonight, Moon Girl. Of course I am. And again, I'm really uh, grateful that you had me on. But before we leave, I just kind of want to just give you guys some of the most common dreams people have. So maybe your viewers um, can get something out of that, if that's okay. That is perfect. Thank you. Um, Well, some of the most common dreams that people have are usually like falling dreams. So if you ever dreamt that you were falling, even if you didn't hit the floor or whatever it was, it usually means like a disappointment. Okay. Or either it, it could be in any dynamic, love work, career, anything like that. Um, And it also can indicate um, falling into a depression or maybe you battle with depression, okay? But it's usually heavy disappointment in any dynamic, okay? Um, Another one is being chased. Many people feel like you should run away from this or whatever, but actually it's the other way around. It's like you're not wanting to face something or procrastination. Like you keep running away from an issue that you need to, you know, solve or or work through, okay? 
Mm -hmm. Another one is being uh, naked in public. So a lot of people may fear this. I've never had that dream before until the other day, like I was telling you earlier. Wow. Um, this, this usually <laughs> means um, that you are kind of worried about how you're being perceived by people. Uh, oh. So say you, you know, you um, went out and had a few drinks and you were a little bit tipsy and you know you were with co-workers or something so now you may be thinking like oh my god did I make a fool of myself did I look like blah 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 they're gonna think I'm so and so they're not gonna want to work with me so it's kind of like you're you're very scared of how people are gonna view you but the majority of the time um you're the only one in the dream who's freaking out about your nudity so other people aren't in the dream so that's kind of like you like you're just letting your imagination go wild or you know it's like your way your subconscious telling you like just let it go you're making it a bigger issue than it really is no one really gives a whatever right it's gosh <laughs> interesting you know and and there's been a lot of questions coming into the feed tonight and i think i think you answered a lot of them but i do have a couple couple more questions we won't get into any more like dream states but like, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Catherine had written, uh, I'm wondering what it means if you're not remembering dreams at the moment. Okay. So that's another misconception people have. Some people will say, I don't dream. I just go to sleep. Right. Everyone dreams about every, um, about every 90 minutes. So you'll have like three the three to six dreams or four to six dreams a night. Everybody dreams. You just, sometimes you just can't remember the dreams and that's just it you just can't remember them so it's nothing that you're doing that's wrong you're just not remembering your dream i mean is is it is it all dreams are equally presented and we're just not remembering them or are there deeper layers of dreams that are deep in our REM state that we're just we will we were never meant to remember but they still happen oh that's kind of an interesting question i feel Maybe subconsciously, there's things that we <laughs> maybe are really not ready to see. So uh, I'm going to say yes on that one. <laughs> I, I mean, because I always tell people, like, you know, because I, I get, I'm sure you get this question a lot too. Do, you know, do my relatives come to me in a dream? We've talked about this in the show yeah. itself. And I always thought, I always think to myself, and I tell them that even if you don't, if you're not remembering, it doesn't mean that they're not showing up. And I don't say that for sure they're showing up, but I don't think it definitely yeah. means that they're not. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I just I just find that to be to be very interesting. Now, let me ask you this as because we're coming to the end of the show. You know, I, I've seen people ask all the different things that you do, and we're going to we're going to post that later. But how can people get a hold of you? Um, you guys can get me on my Instagram. Uh, one is Moon Girl, uh, Mistress of the Paranormal. I do put like videos on there of divination work or some of my paranormal investigations. My other one's uh, Moon Girl Paranormal. That's also um, an Instagram. I do more of my investigations on there. Um, and you can also catch me on YouTube. It's uh, Moon Girl as well there. And where else am I on? Uh, TikTok, Moon Girl, Mistress of the Paranormal um facebook like page the public page moon girl mistress of the paranormal as well You're, so basically everywhere uh, that's, yeah that's, that's what we're kind of getting to here right is is basically but be aware because there is fake a lot of fake profiles of me so just 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 don't get fooled i never ask people for money i don't like harass them to book a reading for me from me so you know i let y'all come to me if you want to book one okay so don't be fooled if somebody else says yes I'm reaching out to you, beloved, how they ever say, <laughs> here's a cash app. That's not me. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to send me some links and I can include that with everything as well. Moon girl. Thank you so very much for everything. Thank this was, you. this was fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And you know, as, as we're coming to the end here, I hope that we provided something tonight that makes you want to come back again and listen. We're going to have a lot more coming up in this week. And like I mentioned, we're going to be talking from all sorts of things from on locations to demonology. And tomorrow we're going to have Michael J. Warden on. So it's going to be a great week. And I hope that you take part in with us. You've been listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Have a great night, everyone. Why must the world be so cold? They've gone against what was critical. They can rape is cool. Think about it. They think it's not wrong. Brands against women, the rape, the abuse, the emotional.